Hello, I have here the 2023 Lego City Custom Car Garage. This comes with 507 pieces and I assembled it live over on Twitch. It cost me $60 US, six zero, it's regular retail price, and you can find it tagged on the video if you're interested in shopping for it online. The set has two cars, but four minifigures, and then you've got a bit of a garage here with a bunch of part racks and things, and also a place where you can run your car up there to do some service on it and some tools. The center part with the ramp lets you drive up, but you're not always able to keep your tires fully on the ground. It's a little bit on the steep side, but this allows you to bring it part way up like so, or to bring it all the way up and be flat. On the far right are some basic tools in metallic silver and a drafting board, which is something you don't frequently see in Lego. And this is just a place to come and ideate to figure out what kind of design you want for your car, what you want it to look like. Up on the rack above, some basic tools, a coffee mug, of course, potentially either some oil filters or if you, uh, fluid filters back here or some oil cans and then a couple of swappable engine part units which you'll see in just a minute. This mobile cart has the rest of the regular Lego tools on it and also holds a welder's helmet or just a regular helmet. This is a brand new print for 2022 on this one and the color is a nice dark magenta and then over here you have an engine lift which has some decent articulation to it to get up and down and you know you can connect onto a, a engine unit piece on the underside. It doesn't work perfectly, but it, I think that the overall shape of it and the proportions of it are good and you can connect a piece to it that looks good on display at the very least. The far left has what looks like blueprints, but you could also consider this to be just a chalkboard that's been very carefully drawn upon and you can rotate these things around to start to figure out what design you want for your vehicle just in a, a larger scale and also bringing things directly to scale as opposed to the the uh, sketch you know it's done over on on the drafting board this is interesting in that each of these pieces is printed so each of these sections that can rotate around has two bricks on it and those bricks are printed edge to edge almost completely almost unheard of honestly in the regular lego city line they easily could have done these as stickers i don't know what they were going for here but i do appreciate it i also like the use of the super mario style piece up here it's really simple but that does use a sticker i've been talking about customizing and swapping things out well on these racks on the side of the ramp are full clips front clips and rear clips that you can swap in and out on the cars to very quickly customize them so without doing the lego thing and taking everything apart, you can just pull these whole sections off and swap them around to substan substantively change the, the look of the two vehicles. This car is obviously a front engine, likely rear wheel drive unit, uh, very JDM looking to me, uh, hints of Nissan, very strong hints of Nissan. You might be able to see a little bit of modern Supra in there as well. And I don't, I don't think they were going for any particular vehicle with this to be a replica, but it looks pretty good to me. I think that the colors are very brave on it and I appreciate that. And of course, it's a six wide vehicle only and thus only holds a single figure in there as you would normally expect for something like this. The the fender flares are nice on the top, but the use, the use of these ones that curve under, I don't think is the greatest to me. They just leave large gaps to the front and back. It's really easy to, of course, get into the interior and put the figure in there. Uh, the steering wheel is just down on the ground. Interestingly, the roof is another print. Huh. Well, I don't know what made them choose to put so many prints into the set. I like the suggestion of a big exposed intercooler on the front and also an intake. The other car is obviously a mid-engine vehicle. I'm thinking R8 or maybe NSX, either classic you know, like second generation or second body, body style or even a modern one, you know, use your own imagination to try to connect things or just see it as what it is, something that's made up. This one's got four exhausts on, on the rear that are kind of uh, converging together, large GT style wing. Once again, a print, yet another print for the, the roof there. Stickers just for the sides and for the, the big wing. And once again, just you know, seating for a single person. This one does have the, the steering wheel up a little bit higher, which makes it make a little bit more sense, makes it look a little bit better and different colored wheels for this one. And now immediately I can just start swapping things out. I can switch these front and rear clips between the two vehicles because they're simply attached with two Lego clips 
going into one of that specialized one by two piece with the two clips on it, rounded, uh, using the same system that they introduced, well, they started using, I believe, for Monkey Kid for one of the sets a season or two ago. And see, these can just directly swap between each other because they're using a system, like a system within a system. You know, it's Lego. Of course, they've got the stud system. You've also got the Technic system, but here's another one that just works nice and simple. Now, are, are these the best color combinations? Not necessarily, but they're not terrible. They don't clash too much. I think that this design right here works pretty well for the back of this car, but you also have those other pieces that were on the, the rack, so I can start pulling this off, bring on this one with the closed off rally lights. That's a brand new print, oh, a, a new color of print. We previously got that same design with the white color and then printed in red and black, as opposed to here we got the cool yellow with the print in silver and black. Nice to get a variation there. So that works. I can swap this one out. Just want to show you the, the main combinations that are possible. And of course, you can do permutations and then you can start taking things apart entirely. This makes it look more more rally-like, more cross-country. And then I can take this one as well. This goes for a specific classic and still used Japanese style of going absurd with huge arrow elements, which is done just for the absurdity of it. And it's a whole thing, it's a whole art form unto itself, not intended to be taken seriously, unless you want it to be. You know, you can see this is maybe a hill climb car. Maybe this actually has arrow that is useful. They swapped the intake over to the other side on this one. So, you know, they give you some stuff that you can that you can do. And it's nice that with a front engine car and a rear engine car, you still have changeable clips. You have exchangeable clips that will work between the two. And then finally, for the engine, either way, you can open up the engine compartment, and whether it's front or rear, pop this out, which is the, the default one. And then here I will... Put this in with the intake angled off to the side. So I guess that's supposed to represent like dual carbs. Keeping it real classic-like. I like that. I like that a lot. This shows that Lego designers were like thinking like car people, at least in, in my opinion. I think that they made some good decisions here. And then here, this can be popped out. It's only using just a jumper in there so it doesn't hold itself in place too hard. And then here you swap in a, a Ferrari engine, yeah? That's what we're looking at for sure. Yes, good. I like it, I like it, I dig it. I like what they're doing here. I think we're gonna put this one back uh, to the, the wing form, but leave. Yeah, 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 there we go. Yeah, it's kind of cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah. This this works for me, this totally works. Before I show the minifigs up close in detail, I wanted to show you the new wheelchair piece, which was introduced with one of the Avatar sets last season. And I didn't realize personally that this has a different style of wheel. So there's a new wheel as well. That's like the third style of wheel that looks very similar to that, but this one fits over a Technic uh, pin or a half, half depth Technic pin. So you can put two of those on one side of a pin, four of them in total on a standard length pin. And it's just, it's interesting. It's different and it seems like it's a little bit more usable. Like here they've attached a welder onto it. So this is the, the, the welder of the, of the crew, of the customizing crew. Uh, she has uh, just a vest on, so that's skin tone there, I'm assuming. And then these are welding gloves. This is sand blue at, as the base, new torso. And these are medium blue. The legs got dark blue legs over here. The flame yellowish orange or key orange. Uh, colored torso there with the dark blue hands and looking around the back both of them do have prints around the back nice magenta color for the hairpiece recolor there and only one of them has the alternate face and then between these I don't think there's anything new print wise the uh, hairpiece is also not brand new uh, wait is that a new color combination with the black hair with the teal I don't think it is I think I've seen that before but uh, between these two no alternate uh, face for either of them, unfortunately. However, they do include helmet pieces. Now, those don't have to be paired up specifically with these figures, but you do get two helmets for your drivers for the sake of safety. These are the leftover pieces. I'm glad to see a number of these parts, especially the new wheelchair piece. It's just going to really help over the long term with its availability on the aftermarket. And this is what the sticker sheet looked like, which is really not too bad for a custom car focused set of this size.
Again, I paid $60 US, 6-0 for this. It goes for 50 or 5-0 euros and 45 pounds UK. So kind of a decent spread there with the exchange rates, depending upon how exchange rates fluctuate. They've kind of been all over the place lately. And again, this has 507 pieces. For the amount of stuff here, I feel like the US price at the very least is a little bit high, but not too much. Most importantly, what is here is good. That's very, very key to me. And it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel tiny for the price that I paid. The inclusion of all these prints feels a little bit luxurious by today's standards. Uh, yeah, I like the some of the recolors and just interesting parts in general. And the play value here is really, really, really good. Really good. The the designs, you know, this, this set is made for kids six and up, I believe. And uh, I don't know, there's a seriousness to it that I appreciate. There's a silliness to it. But there's also a seriousness to it. It really feels like this is something that a kid of any age who's really into cars could enjoy quite a bit and very, very quickly get into true customization, taking some of these sub-assemblies apart and figuring out, okay, well, let me let me make it more the way that I want it to be. If I was drawing and painting, drafting onto this drafting board over here, what exactly would I do? So in that sense, it accomplishes a lot of really, really good things and just generally I'm happy that this product is on the market. I hope that they will continue to try to use this exact system for maybe at least a couple seasons, you know, have one more, let's say a, a $30 set with a single car or maybe just a two car pack with a little bit of garage stuff on the side in the fall. And then just a single car set with one option piece, uh, something in the 15 to $20 range, uh, for Gen 1 2024, something like that, just to keep this alive, because I think they have a really, really good thing here. A lot of work went into de designing the system so they would work with the rear engine, mirror, mid, mid rear engine, or front engine cars, and it's it's good. So I would like to see more of this. One thing that I did not show you in terms of modularity with this set is that the individual sections of the backdrop can also be swapped out because they just use Technic um, axles. And each section has a Technic axle also on the outside. So you can rearrange things and also you can make things flat. That's one thing that I definitely should have shown you. If you pull this pin out, unfortunately it's, it's in there right now. They probably want to take that apart a little bit to get it out more easily, but you can just make the whole back flat. So it doesn't have that inward curve or angle to it, but yeah, it's another opportunity to add to it in the future with future sets. I'm just saying Lego designers, if any of you are listening, please, do more of the good work that you've done here. I like it. I think a lot of people like it. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Hope that you enjoy this. I'll talk to you again soon because I've got a lot more sets to review. Bye for now.